folks, welcome to another edition of Play Branson. We're actually here backstage at the Mickey Gilly Theater, and we're here today with Mickey Gilly and Johnny Lee. Guys, good to have you on the show. Well, thanks for having us on, Chris. Thank you. Pleasure. So, so you just you just finished the show, and I was back here hearing people singing, and you guys playing a lot of your hit records, and so it's good to have you guys back in Branson. Tuesday afternoon, uh, right here in Branson, Missouri. It's a thrill and a pleasure to be with you. I've been here for 20-plus years. Yeah, long time. Yeah, it's been a long That's time. That's what we do. We do our hits. So you guys, you guys have, you guys go way back together. Since and Bobby so, Dick was a male. <laughs> and so, talk, talk we, to we started back in the it. '60s together. We I was playing a club called the Nestadale, and uh, I met Johnny. I was at the pool table at that time. I think playing pool, and Johnny came in. And uh, uh, long story short, he came to sing with us. And I thought he sang very well, and uh, he joined me at that time, and uh, we became partners and been working together for a long time. Yeah, and so. Johnny, maybe we'll tell you how it happened, I don't know. Well, he, he, I met Mickey and started paying me $90 a week cash. <laughs> All I do was sing seven nights a week, six or seven hours a night. I'll tell you what kind of guy he is. That was in 1968. 1980, the movie Urban Cowboy comes out, Looking for Love comes out. Goes gold, goes platinum, and all that kind of stuff. Sucker raised me right to $100 a week cash. Only, just only 10 bucks, huh? Yeah, that's a big deal, man. Yeah, I, I thought he was overpaid then. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. So you got, I mean, the Urban Cowboy movie and music was huge, right? Still is. Yeah, the Urban Cowboy really changed our life totally because uh, it launched me and uh, Johnny into the stratosphere as far as our career was concerned. Uh, all the showrooms in Vegas, Reno, Tile, and Atlantic City opened up. We got to travel the world. Uh, we got to play for two presidents, President Ronald Reagan, President George Bush Sr. Uh, I was fortunate enough uh, doing certain things that uh, they gave me a star on Hollywood Walk of Fame. They invited me to come to Hollywood and do some acting roles and uh, Johnny had uh, the chance to work some of those day dates with me because we did Fantasy Islands together, I know. Uh, and, and then you did some other things too. A-Team and Chips yeah. and all so, kinds of So we, 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 had, we had a good run. It's been a good ride. Yeah, Mr. T. Mr. T. Yeah. I was on there with uh, the episode that I did with Mr. T and Boy George and Johnny Lee. <laughs> Remember my daughter was a little girl, Cherish. Yeah. She went up to Boy George and said, are you a boy or a girl? She said, I'm a boy. She said, no way. <laughs> it was funny. So you guys have, uh, you sold your theater here in Branson. Uh, yeah, you mentioned, you mentioned the Mickey Gilly Theater, but it now it's called the Mickey Gilly Grand Shanghai Theater, I think. That's right. They, they renamed right. it. and. Uh, they're changing the uh, the restaurant next door too. It's going to be called uh, something about um, Shanghai Walk or something. I don't know. Well, anyway, it's, it's going to be a, probably a pretty good restaurant when I get through with it. They're going to have Johnny Lee yeah. Peking Duck too. <laughs> All right. We can go to Short Ribs. Yeah. 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 So anyway, it ought to be interesting when I get it open. Uh, and I'm glad to be out of the business world. I, I just want to sing. I don't, I don't want to be in business anymore. I'm, I'm 82 years old. Right. You know, I mean, I've been here for a long time. Well, and, and looking back on your career, you've been doing this at least, I think I figured, 61 years. That's or somewhere probably, about that. You're, well, I made my first record in 1957, so you can consider the fact that that's when I threw my hat in the ring trying to yeah. follow my cousin Jerry Lee. Yeah. And like I said in the show, you know, I should have followed Swagger if I wanted to make money. <laughs> but uh, I've, I've enjoyed my career and uh, I've had a good time. The folks give me 17 number one songs, and uh, between me and Johnny together, we go out on the road together. We've had 25 plus number one songs we can sing, along with the urban cowboy music. So, we did a, we did a show down in and uh, 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 down in uh, um, Kendall, Louisiana, and the place uh, seated uh, about 6,000 people. And when I walked out and saw the venue, I turned to Johnny and I said, "They got George Strait here tonight, or Garth Brooks?" He says, "No, I don't think so." I said, "We'll never fill this place up." Sure enough, we sold it out. That's awesome. And they uh, out there dancing to the urban cowboy music, and I turned to Johnny and I said, I think they showed up to see if we're still alive, Johnny. <laughs> Every show we've done on the road, though, so yeah. far, yeah, in the urban cowboy reunion yeah. tour has been sold out. That's awesome. Every single yeah, it, it, it's, it's been quite an experience for both of us, you know. We've been out on the road uh, traveling and doing the music, and uh, like Johnny said, uh, the majority of the places we've played has been completely sold out. So that's quite a thrill for us to be as old as we are, and the music has still held up all that time. Yeah. But he had some great music in the film, The Urban Cowboy, I thought. Well, and I think uh, there's a lot of things about music. Once people learn it or know it or hear it, you know, it kind of just resonates in their soul, you know, and it's from certain time periods of their life. And so, you know, when I was listening, people were, you know, they were singing it out there. Yeah, well, that, so, you know, that film came out, what, 38 years ago. There was a lot of people who weren't even born when that film, you know, was <laughs> released. And all of a sudden, you know, they're, 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 they're getting to know some of the music because it's run on TV quite a bit. 
and uh, the Urban Cowboy just keeps it alive. Yeah, so yeah. it's been great for me and Johnny. So you guys are doing um, some. You're you're kind of doing a run here through. I think about the end of May uh, here in Branson. And we work in the spring and we work in the fall. Just three days a week: uh, Sunday and Monday and Tuesday afternoon. And the shows are on uh, Sunday and Monday at eight o'clock at night, and uh, the afternoon shows at three p.m. Yeah. Uh, and we'll come back in the fall in September, October, November, and I think the first week in December. Right. And we'll do it three days a week because uh, we're doing road dates. Mm -hmm. So we kept the Fridays and Saturdays open for you know for the people out there. But we, we just got back from uh, Idaho. Wow. And uh, and I, I did a, a run through Canada. And John, Johnny and I, Johnny and I don't work together on every show, but uh, majority of them we try to keep it together because it's more interesting, entertaining. When we can do the urban cowboy music together. So when you're going out on the road, are you you got a full band and all that? that the go band with you? you saw on the uh, on the stage traveled with me on, on the on the road. We got a seven piece band. We got the two girl singers and I got a tech crew and uh, we try to make the music sound as close as we can to the records. Wow, wow. So Johnny, what um, uh, what you've lived here in Branson for a long time as well. Yeah. Um, in fact, you don't probably know this, but you and I actually used to live in the same neighborhood, and. Um, at Halloween, my kids would knock on your door instead of saying oh, yeah. instead of saying trick or treat, they'd say we're looking for love in all the wrong places. I don't know <laughs> if you remember that or not. Oh yeah, yeah, over, over in uh, off Fall Creek. Yeah, yeah, off Country Bluff. Yeah, yeah, Halloween was a really special time for me. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I would just stay way out by the road and watch them do it. But I got a big laugh hey, out man. of it. I, they, kids, I, I love kids, and and I remember mean, one year. Bless my son. He he showed up with a bunch of his buddies, five or six of his buddies. They all dressed up. They go out and go trick or treat and come back home. They say, hey man, let's change outfits and go again. I said, you dummy. <laughs> you know he was the first time you're going back the same group. You know. Yeah. I loved that though. Yeah, I think I, I remember many times your uh, your son uh, rocking out in the in the garage. Oh yeah, yeah. And he had a band, a garage a garage band in that yeah, case. Yeah, yeah. You know? Secure with a garage band. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Mickey, one of the things that I think your that one of your passions was flying, right? You used to do a lot of flying yourself. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoy aviation. I've got a probably eight nine thousand hours of flying time, and yeah. uh, I usually tell the people, you know, I said. Uh, I, I was pretty good one time at flying my airplane. I, I learned a lot from the guy that taught me how to fly. He taught me everything I wanted to know about aviation except how to crash. I learned that on my own. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, uh, I, at the time that I had those crashes, I, I was getting sick and I didn't realize it. I, had, uh, I mentioned brain surgery. I had what they call hydrocephalus, which is liquid on the brain. Wow. And I was lost my balance and I was losing uh, you know, uh, my memory and I couldn't remember everything. And so I, I wasn't. Well, you, uh, all together. You really I, have often, I often accuse him of being a waterhead. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've, you've overcome a lot, though, because in you know several years ago you had a pretty serious accident. Well, the, the spinal cord injury what what took everything out of me. When yeah. I had a spinal cord injury in two double oh nine, that's what really hurt me more than anything else. I was paralyzed my neck down for three months, couldn't move. Yeah, and how long did and it? My, my hands haven't never come, come back. This hand's still partially paralyzed. Wow. This one I can I can use a little better than this one, but this one I have a hard time with. Yeah. I can't play the keyboard anymore. I can't play golf. Uh, I lost my ability to fly my airplane. Although um, I still fly with my son, but he's got a license, so mm -hmm. I can use the radio and talk to the controllers and things of that sort. Yeah. So it's still got the brain. So how how long was your recovery in that process before well, you were I'm, back I'm on still stage? partially still trying to recover from two days now. I mean, I hadn't got it all back together yet. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time walking. Uh, my balance is not where it should be. My uh, hands don't work. I can't button a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> if I don't wear slip-ons, I'm, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Huh. Um, well, I think it's... Um, but I've come a long ways. You have. You have. And uh, it's good to... I, I yeah. know a lot of people are excited to see you guys both back in Branson doing dates. And Well, you uh, heard my opening a while ago when I said, I just turned 82. Hope I look like I'm 50. I'm walking like I'm 90. <laughs> True story. 